Good morning. 9 11 a.m. as we begin recording this. Good morning. Brethren, sisters, Church of Living God, hello. Got several things uh, working, the Lord and I, and um, but today, this is something that the Lord just, just like here. <laughs> um, so, with that said, please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Oh, Brad's holding <laughs> two uh, sets of scriptures. Yeah, yeah, it's going to be one of these. You want a little meat today, brother? Sister, I hope this is the day that you get filled. Today is the 26th. The proverb for today, very beautiful. And in light of current events with myself personally, and with several of you, very pertinent, very pertinent. We're going to begin this video in Proverbs chapter 26. But then we are going to go to Psalm 40. And we are going to do some expository study in Psalm 40. We're actually going to do the entire psalm. <gasps> oh yeah, buddy. We got some we got some stuff we're gonna go through today. That's why I have two sets of scriptures. So it's easier for me to do it like this. So but we're going to begin this in Proverbs chapter 26. We're going to read just the first five verses. Okay? And it's very interesting to note about, about Psalm or about Proverbs chapter 26. Is that it begins talking about a fool. What is a fool? The fool hath said in his heart, there is no God. As snow in summer, and as rain in harvest, so honor is not seemingly for a fool. Honor. Do you realize when the Lord saves you, it is an honor? It really is. Because you, as a lost sinner, you deserve death, hell, and the grave. I, as a saved sinner, deserve death, hell, and the grave. But because of his grace, and because I came to him on his terms, as those of you who are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, uh, converted a new creature, you've come to him on his terms as well. As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. Everything happens for a reason. There are no coincidences. Coincidences, people, do not exist. You are not going to stand, lost man or woman, you devil. Uh, you are not going to stand before the great white throne of judgment, the great white throne, and say, well, I, 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 didn't, I didn't know. The curse causeless shall not come. There's a reason things are happening to you. And at the great white throne, which is for you lost people, um, you're going to be standing before him. You're not going to be able to have an excuse. There will be no excuse for you. Okay? What is coming upon you has happened for a reason. No, co uh, no coincidence. Okay? Whether from your sin, whether for judgment, chastisement, correction, whether for blessing. The curse causeless shall not come. Verse 3 is interesting. Note this. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, animals, 
A horse and an ass, they have a body, they have a spirit. Animals, you dear, young, deluded friend of, of mine, um, who thinks that dogs are going to be in heaven. I'm so sorry. Um, animals have a body and a spirit. They do not have a soul. Okay? Man has a spirit, soul, and body because we're made in the image of God. Okay? But note that a horse doesn't have a soul. An ass doesn't have a soul. A whip for the horse, a bridle for the ass, and a rod for the fool's back. You do you see that horse and ass and then a fool who says in his heart there is no God? Verse 4. Answer not a fool according to his folly, lest thou also be like unto him. Don't fight fire with fire. Don't get even. It's not our place to get even. Uh, I will be honest with you. And this is being addressed to a certain individual. I have a lot of evidence against you. A lot. That can definitely prove the fact that you are a lost devil. And see, um, those of your brethren who are with the Jesuit order and coadjutors themselves have been, you uh, talk them into sending them to me to try to get me to play my hand or whatnot. But see, if I play like you do, number one, in your demented little head of yours, uh, you will be thinking that you've gotten a victory because you've made someone who is saved go down to your level which is a deplorable lost devil and also too with others uh, now shifting my attention um, who think that you know they're being avoided because they have hammered you with such truth <laughs> answer not a fool according to his folly don't be like them don't play like them. Like I said, I'm really tempted. I get tempted a lot to do these videos. There, I have two of them. Um, and even the people who this uh, certain individual can now call his Christian prison <laughs> um, have the same, a lot of the same evidence, though not as damning as I do, um, also have the same evidence. But see, when you fight fire with fire, what wins? And when you answer a fool according to his folly, you're like him. I'm going to tell you something there, buddy boy. I am nothing like you. Nothing. I'm saved. And you're lost going to hell. And you are one of those who have gone past that point of no return where you cannot be saved. Not that the Lord can't save you, but you've, you're you gone. You're going to hell, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Can the Lord work a miracle? Yes, he can. Uh, is it going to be on your deathbed like your Emperor Constantine, everyone likes to think he did? Uh, no, no, no. But see, we're not supposed to fight or be like onto them. Okay? Especially for little infinitesimal nothings. Okay? Verse 5. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. And see, like I said, you play their way in their little demented minds day one because they got you to go down to the sewer where they are. And on that, see, we want to get even, don't we? You, my demented dear friend, 
you're going to see this and you're going to want to get even. Right? Got to get even. Got to settle that score. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Verses 31 on to verse 39. Deuteronomy 32. Verses 31 on to verse 39. For their rock is not as our rock. See, the God you serve is not the God I serve. Your God is a little G, Satan. My God is the Lord Jesus Christ, God, my Father. Big difference. Okay? Even our enemies themselves being judges, ye shall know them by their fruits. Look at, look at their channels. Look at their channels. You teach apples. Absolutely nothing. But all you guys do is attack. That's it. You are incapable of doing anything else. Okay? Go ahead. I dare you. Open up the scriptures and try, try to teach something through the scriptures. You can't do it. Because you are spiritually discerned. There's a reason why. You're lost. And all you could do is uh, uh, do stuff that your Jesuit masters have given you. And this is addressed to all of you lost devils. Okay? Not to one individual. Okay? You can't, you can't do it. You're incapable. Because your rock is not a, our rock. And in that verse, note the little, we've gone over this before, the little r versus the big r there, okay? For their vine is of the vine of Sodom and of the fields of Gomorrah. Their grapes are grapes of gall, their clusters are bitter. Their wine is the poison of dragons, dragons, devil, and the cruel venom of asps. Is not this laid up in store with me and sealed up among my treasures? To me belongeth vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time. <laughs> Wish it would hurry up, right? <laughs> right, brethren? Right? But when it, when it catches up, for these devils, it will be too late for them. For the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things that shall come upon them make haste. Because evil is executed against the work uh, speedily, there, uh, therefore man's hearts are set in them to do evil. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Go find it. And I just bradized that, by the way, so excuse me. For the Lord shall judge his people and repent himself for his servants when he seeth that their power is gone and there is none shut up or left. And he shall say, Where are their gods, their rock in whom they trusted? Now hold, put this into perspective. These devils, you know, just like the magicians in Egypt, they can mimic some of the miracles that God does. Yes, they can. They can make themselves appear to be something they are not up to a point. But beyond that point, they, they fall flat on the face. Every single time. The gods you trust are the ones out there. Not the one who dwelleth in heaven and dwelleth in us, the church of the living God. Those of us who are new creatures. which did eat the fat of their sacrifices and drank the wine of their drink offerings, let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See, a form of that imitation is that some of these devils are doing really well because they're playing by the devil's rules. <laughs> they have they have bowed themselves onto 
the devil, and he has given them everything because they worship him. There are those of us of the Church of the Living God who our Lord is sustaining through our brethren. Let's see, Satan is copycatting that with his people. You see? Beg your pardon. It makes me wonder how someone can have so much of this world's goods to throw and flaunt around. Makes you wonder sometimes, doesn't it? See now that I, even I am He, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, and I heal. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. Oh, you want to get even. Hey, 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 I, I, I want to get even sometimes too, but you know what? Uh, verse 35, to me belongeth vengeance. The vengeance of a man will only go so far. The vengeance of our Lord. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Ought that ought to scare the hell out of you. Ought to. Why it doesn't, I don't know. But see, looking back at Proverbs chapter 26, verses 4 and 5. Answer not a fool according to his folly. Don't fight like them. Don't make video for video. That's what they want. Why? Lest thou be like unto him. They want to show others that we are just like them in fighting fire with fire like they do. And go nowhere to distract you. See? That's the ultimate game. To distract you. To get your attention from what the Lord wants to pay attention to them. And they're not worth it. You're not worth it. But see these devils. You brethren have you have we have to be constantly reminded because these devils are good at one thing. Irritation. Oh, that's what they're best at. And they know it. And they sit back with smiles on their face. It's like ha 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 ha, I won, I got you to go down to the sewer. The sewage where I am. <laughs> Big smile, right? Yeah. Answer a fool according to his folly, lest he be wise in his own conceit. Talking about pride. And our Lord has a problem with pride. <laughs> yeah, he sure does. Uh, Proverbs chapter 6. I'm going to go over these again very quickly before we get to Psalm 40. Because it's meat. It's meat. M-E-E-T. Okay? It's meat. Proverbs 6, verses 16 on to verse 19. These six things doth the Lord hate. Six is the number of man. Okay? God as man. God as man. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Will be ruling and reigning in Jerusalem when he come back see that's where I disagree with you brother Brian on the fourth dispensation I understand that the number of uh, it is the number of the man 666 I get that but I believe that the sixth dispensation is the kingdom of heaven because God as man will be ruling and remember Satan is a copycat so that's where I disagree with by the Brian then okay but let's continue these six things doth the Lord hate yea seven are an abomination unto him proud look we can't see these devils when they 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 get a victory as they believe and you fight like they do and play like they do and and to answer railing for railing uh, they got a proud look on them a lying tongue that's all they do and hands that shed innocent blood. Some of these guys go after people, after guys who have nothing to do with them. <laughs> and heart that deviseth wicked imaginations, feet that be swift in running to mischief. Remember, the false prophet runs to the forefront, while those who are of the church of the living God, kind of like Moses. Um, but see, they're like Moses. You got to be careful because Moses. 
uh, when the Lord called him in Exodus chapter 3, he's like, hey, no, Lord, I'm not eloquent. I can't do this. Uh, yes, you can. I'll be with your mouth. Who made your mouth? I did. Okay, I'll be with you. Lord, come on. I can't do this. Okay, uh, Lord, send who? You're going, whether you like it or not. Okay? You're going to get on me about how you speak? Okay, fine. I'll, here, get your brother Aaron. He's coming. He'll, he'll, he'll do the talking for you. And look at how Aaron kind of was a little uh, burr under the saddle for Moses. Okay? But see, in type, that's we as a church of the living God. Okay? To work for the Lord is a very humbling, scary, and terrifying thing. But see, the false prophets, they run. These prophets ran, and I sent them not. See? And heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Feet that be swift to running to mischief. Swift, they run. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he, and this is what these devils do, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Who like, who want to isolate under the guise of adherence. Hmm. And of course, Proverbs chapter 8, just one verse. Verse 13. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil. We are to hate what is evil, brethren. Pride. Arrogancy. In the evil way, in the forward mouth, do I hate. And also something that I read today in Jeremiah, my favorite book in all scripture, uh, Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah chapter 48, verses 28 on to verse 30. Talking about Moab. Moab. The uh, Moabites, the Ammonites, descendants of Lot, from his incestuous relationship with his two daughters. Jeremiah 48, verses 28 on to verse 30. O ye that dwell in Moab, leave the cities. Isn't that interesting? Um, Lot left Sodom when God destroyed it in an instant. Isn't that interesting? O ye that dwell in Moab, Moab is a descendant of Lot. Leave the cities and dwell in the rock. No coincidence in that verse, is there? And be like the dove that maketh her nest in the sides of the hole's mouth. And that's exactly what uh, Lot and his two daughters did. Because they thought everything was done. They went to, to uh, Zoar. They went to the mountain, right? Yeah. We have heard of the pride of Moab. He is exceeding proud. His loftiness and his arrogancy. And his pride and the haughtiness of his heart. Oh, a good description of every single devil that we, uh, we have ever encountered. I know his wrath. Saith the Lord. But it shall not be so. His lies shall not so affect it. See, if you're a devil, if you're a coadjutor for the Jesuit order, you're just shooting your mouth off and can do nothing but that. You have no reason to rejoice except for what you have here right now. And that, I, I, I truly pity you. I, I really do. I mean, that's why they're so adamant, brethren, because this is all, this is all they got, man. If, if we, if this was all we had, wouldn't you also be vehement to protect what you have? 
See, this is not our home. This is their home. This ain't our home. We have a lot to rejoice for. We have a whole lot to rejoice for. Psalm 40. Psalm 40. Like I said, I, I, I got several things. We, excuse me. Got several things going on. Uh, certain things, certain videos and whatnot. I'm going to put this up here so I can... Okay. And uh, this was just part of my normal daily reading. And the Lord's like, stop. Pay attention here. I'm going to show you some things. It's like, oh, wow. So, Psalm 40. We are going to go through this entire uh, psalm. We're going to do some expository stuff here. Hope you're ready. Follow me along. I expect you to, by the way. I shouldn't have to say that to you, but please follow me along. Okay? Psalm 40. I waited, come on, patiently for the Lord. Oh, yeah, patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Psalm 42. Psalm 42. You're going to notice that in this, uh, we're going to reference uh, Psalm 41 and 42 throughout this thing. But Psalm 42, verses 1 under verse 4. As the heart panted, H A R T, not this one. Okay. As the heart panteth after the water brooks. So panteth my soul after thee, O God. Come on, brother, sister. Huh? Huh? My soul thirsteth for God. For the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Even so, come Lord Jesus, right? Right? Come on now. Yeah? While the devil's like trying to hold everything off, you know, to... to uh, hold on to every filthy little thing they have down here. We're, we, on the other hand, as the Church of the Living God, uh, uh, come, come on, Lord. <laughs> come on. Come on, Lord. My tears have been my meat day and night while they continually say unto me, Where is thy God? Where is your God that's going to deliver us? Look at all the nightmarish, hellish stuff we're going uh, through. And your God is a God of love. Where is he? Mm -hmm. Where is your God who's going to defend you upon uh, a, a constant attacks from idiot devils? Where is your God, right? And all the while, we're like, oh, oh, Lord God, please. What does that say? That's the heart, H-A-R-T, H-A-R-T. Panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Verse 4. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. With the voice of joy and praise. With a multitude that kept holy day like Christ Mass. Shh, shh, shh. Don't. Don't that alone. Okay? <laughs> Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Come on, fingers. Romans chapter 5. Verses 1 on to verse 6. You know, if the Lord ever gives you the privilege, the the absolute privilege, the honor to use you to bring someone onto himself through the Romans road. Um, by the time you get to Romans chapter 5, you're going to know what you're dealing with. Show you. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 on verse 6. I put my notes over there right here standing up so I can see them better. 
Therefore, being justified by faith. How do you arrive at that faith? Just holy, holy. Oh, yeah, I believe what the Bible says. I'll just believe it. Sure, let me go on continuing in my life, not as a new creature. Good luck. No, you come to that faith, how? We'll, let, we'll actually look at that a little later. Okay? Brokenness and contrition, just so you know. We're therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. See, we're standing in His grace. For by grace are you saved. We're going to look at that as well today. Um, not the fact that you saved yourself by your belief. See, think about that. See, look, look at that verse. Okay? By whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. We're standing by His grace. Okay? So, uh, hold your place here. Psalm 127. Okay? A verse that, uh, a couple of verses that have, the Lord has really just laid on me the past couple of days. Psalm 127. Verses 1 and 2. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Unless the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Uh, unless the Lord save you by you coming to Him on His terms, your belief is vain. You're a vain believer because you're just believing without coming to Him first broken and contrite. You're skipping over the main ingredients to get to the uh, faith, see. And you're building your own house. And we are a new creature. We don't have merely a changed life. A changed life is the result of being a new creature. Okay? We are new creatures. You're not. Except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keepeth the city, the watchman waketh but in vain. It is vain. <laughs> I have sleeping issues now. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows. Why? For so he giveth his beloved sleep. You're not going to sleep unless the Lord let you sleep. You're not going to eat unless the Lord lets you eat. You're not going to breathe unless the Lord allow you to breathe. Who is in control? Go back to Romans chapter 5. Picking up at verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulations also. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, and we are to have a big smile over that, aren't we? Yes. Knowing that tribulation worketh Ooh, come on, say it. Say it. Patience. And patience. Experience. And experience. Oh. And see, this is something that the Lord reminded me of lately. Uh, because um, I, I was fearful. I was doubting that the Lord was going to do as he has been doing ever since he called us here and put me to where he has. Um, I started fear and you know I you know through patience and patience experience and experience hope and the Lord was really angry with me I'm tired of you doubting like this Brad sorry okay and hope maketh not ashamed because if you have hope on the Lord all things are possible if you have hope in this world, of the things of the world, of Satan, ah, oh. see, 
you will have maybe right now but hereafter is what you really need to be concerned about and see the devil and his ministers they want you to look at just the right now and not think about what's coming after right now steal the Jesuit poniard get back and go have your donuts the hereafter five years tops start dropping like flies and that flies make the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking savor and hope maketh not ashamed because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given to us okay the, now there are some people out there who will look at verse 5 and say that the love of God is in everybody. <laughs> ah! How can you love God unless you fear Him? If you don't have the fear of the Lord, if you don't have the fear of the Lord, it is impossible for you to love Him. Look at King Nebuchadnezzar. He, he ended up loving the Lord. Why? Because he feared him. King Manasseh. He ended up he ended up loving the Lord. Why? Because he was made to fear him. Jeffrey Dahmer. Okay? He loved the Lord. Why? Because he ended up fearing him. You can usually tell when someone doesn't fear the Lord. Now, you and I as a church of the living God, yes, we don't always fear the Lord as we ought to. We get forgetful, and then he'll bring something like heart problems upon you and uh, humble you, you know, change your... You know, um, somebody had said to me recently, like, you seem different. You listen to me, buddy. I almost died. And yet, you and I as a church of the living God, we know that we're going to die. We know that we're going to be with heaven, to be absent from the body, uh, to be present with the Lord. Amen, amen. We know that. We know that. But when it comes smack dab in your face, that's like... Whoa, whoa. See, we know. But when we, it comes right here where you're not getting away uh, from it. Yes, we're prepared. We know this. But like I said, when you actually experience it, where you're just about to die, okay, buddy? Yeah, that changes your perspective a little. See, we come to the Lord and there is a death. Yes, there is. You have to die to yourself. Okay, yes. there. For you to be a new creature, something old has to die. That's the way it works. Okay? But, and we know, we know that, we know. But then when you face it, it's like, oh wow, this much, I'm going to die today? Oh, wow. Wow. Not fearing where you were going, like my biggest fear, my wife. With what's coming, I can't trust my wife onto her son and defend for her own. Yeah, there was a difference, buddy. Yeah. When someone experiences that, it really changes your perspective. Verse 5 again. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts. Whose hearts? By the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us, those who are saved. For when we were yet without strength in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. And yes, he did. But see, not everyone is going to come to him on his terms. Okay? Romans chapter 8. Verses 25. Verse 
Right. But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Likewise the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself. Now see the, the Bible's put himself in there. It's itself. Oh, the scriptures call it this Holy Spirit and it. Shut up. No, itself. Part of the Godhead. Spirit, soul, and body. The Godhead. You put himself in there. That plays into the satanic, Babylonian, Egyptian, Roman Catholic trinity. A God, one God of three divine persons. A person is a spirit, soul, and body. You put himself there when the scripture says itself, that's playing into the trinity. The trinity is satanic. Okay? But the spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And many of you of the Church of the Living God have experienced this. Where all of a sudden there's something that's like you know, um, like my brother Jeff a while ago, uh, both of us, we were like, for no reason, all of a sudden we were like, you know, and we pray for him every single day. But uh, it was like that day, it was specific upon us. It's like, we really need to pray fervently for our brother Jeff right now. Then to come find out, it was meat. You know, you're the church of the living God. You know what I'm talking about. You're a devil. You have no idea. Obviously. Okay. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God... To them who are the called, saved, according to his purpose. I waited patiently for the Lord. He inclined unto me. And he inclined unto me and heard my cry. Romans chapter 15 now. Verses 1 on to verse 6. We then that are strong ought to bear the infirmities of the weak and not to please ourselves. Yeah. Let every one of us please his neighbor for his good to edification. And that doesn't mean not telling them about the truth of their sins. For even Christ pleased not himself. But as it is written, the reproaches of them that reproached thee fell on me. For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, making reference unto the Old Testament, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Notice it says scripture. Scriptures and not of the emotions. Not of the Feelings, no. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now the God of patience and consolation grant you to be like-minded one toward another according to Christ Jesus. That ye may with one mind and one mouth glorify God even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ let's throw in verse 7 wherefore receive ye one another as Christ also received us to the glory of God I might not like you you might not like me but if you are truly saved born again converted of the church of the living God and are a new creature you're my brother you're my sister I might not like you. I might not really like you right now. <laughs> but
but um, that doesn't change the fact that we are brethren. And I, I love you. Whether you like that or not. See, that's how we are to be with brethren. And you devils, guess what? Shame, shame, shame. You don't count in that equation. Okay? The only love you get from us is when we tell you the truth. Verse 2 in Psalm 40. He brought me up also out of an horrible pit, out of the miry clay. Clay comes from the earth, miry, can't see through it, thick, you know. And set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Romans chapter 10. We have a lot, brethren, to be thankful for. Not to be arrogant or boastful about. Because it is not our salvation, is it? It's not my faith, my salvation. No. It's his salvation and our faith. By grace, through faith. Not our faith, our salvation. Because if it is your faith, guess what? It is your salvation. By grace, through faith. You idiot. Romans chapter 10, verses 8 on the verse, for you guys, the devils, verse 15. One of the most redundant, stupid, beg your pardon, retarded arguments that these devils come up with. Oh, they don't read about Romans 14. I, I beg your pardon for the use of that previous word. I beg your pardon. In a point. Romans chapter 10 verses 8 on to verse 15. But what saith it? Your emotions? Your feelings? No. The scriptures. The word is nigh thee even in thy mouth and in thy heart. God's laws are written in your hearts. It is. Yes. Yeah. That doesn't mean that everybody going to be saved. Shalom you devil. Uh no, but man instinctively at a point knows that something is wrong or something is right. Because God's laws are written in all their hearts. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. See, why the devils hate that is because it is the lesser calling upon the greater. You coming to him broken and contrite in humility and fear of the Lord, you call upon his name. And may he save you. Okay? Yes. But see, you broken dust calling on the creator. See, the lesser calling on the greater. And see, the devils want to remove that and just believe, making themselves equal with the Creator. Very scary, very devilish. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. Every one of you easy believers in devils. Full of pride. Because you're saved by what you do. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on, on him shall not be ashamed. So many of you believe in him. Yes. Believing on. Putting your things on him. There's a difference between on and in. Okay? You can believe in the facts that Jesus Christ, you can even look that up. Um, quite laborious to do so, but you can even look that up, that uh, historically it is proven that Jesus of Nazareth was crucified on the cross. The Romans, even still to this day, as I, as I remember, even have the documentation to prove that. So you can believe the facts, but see, is he God? Is he our Father? Unless you believe that I am he, not the second person of a Satanic Catholic Trinity. No. 
one God, the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. You know the Holy Ghost? What is that spirit? Okay. Spirit's whole body. Okay. 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 For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on, putting on, not just mere believing in, the devils believe and tremble. Okay. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all them, uh, unto all that call upon him. And see, you, you believe, but you say by your belief, by what you do. And so adamant about calling. See, that you're, you're showing your pride. Our enemies themselves being judges. They're smiley. Okay? For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Now see, some run into that who are lost, not broken, or contrite, who say, I've called on the Lord a thousand times in it. Well, dear man, you're, you're not broken. You're not contrite. You don't have the fear of the Lord. I mean, I, I've run into the lost people who mockingly call on the name of the Lord and people with good intentions Call on the name of the Lord. Are you broken? Are you sorrowful? Are you fearful? See, unless that, ha unless you are broken, contrite, and have the fear of the Lord, you can call on His name all day. It doesn't make a difference. There is a condition for Him saving you people. Okay? Don't let these idiot devils deceive you. Please. Okay? Now, let's, verse 14. I'm, I'm doing this just for you devils, okay? How then shall they call on him whom they have not believed? It says believe. See, it says, sh 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 shut up. Okay, cherry pick one word in a verse. And then say, oh, you guys are pathetic. And how shall they believe in whom they have not believed? Heard. Heard. Oh. Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right? That's verse 17, by the way. Okay? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Okay? Okay? Verse 14 is talking about those who are preaching, speaking, Okay? Those who are witnesses. Okay? Not the Chehos. But verse 14. Okay. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. So verses 14, you idiots, and verse 15, you devils, um, is talking about those who are preaching the gospel of our salvation. Okay? That's what verse 14 and 15 talk about, you stupid idiots. I'm talking to the devils, by the way. Okay? That's talking, that's talking about those who preach so that people can hear and then our Lord save them when they come to Him broken, contrite, and in fear. Okay? So 14 and 15 are there for those who preach, you idiots. Okay? Do you get it? I know you do, but you don't because you're lost. So, yeah. Okay. Enough of that. Verse 3 in Psalm 40. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto God, unto our God. May, many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Let's read that again. And he hath put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear, and shall trust in the Lord. Verse 3 is definitely sounds like talking about one being a new creature. We're going to look at that verse later, so that's why we're not going to 1 
Corinthians 5, verse 17 right now. We're going to look at it later, okay? But verse 3 is talking about something that's new. When our Lord saves you, yeah, you are a new creature. Okay? Religious people have a changed life. Those who are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, we are a new creature. Okay? For that, check this out. Isaiah chapter 43. Isaiah chapter 43. Now in context, Isaiah chapter 43 is for who? Who? Yes, the Jews. So, but what we are looking at denotes also what? A new thing. If you come to the Lord, see, you have to die to your self-righteousness. In order for you to be a new creature, something has to die. Okay? So, something has to pass away. You know, the new heavens and the new earth, which this is a reference on to. But, Isaiah chapter 43, verses 16 on to verse 21. Thus saith the Lord, which maketh a way in the sea, and a path in the mighty waters. I'm discovering that quite often, depending on the context, waters, seas roar, roaring, depending on the context in which it appears. Quite often, it's reference onto people. Okay? There are, like I said, that's dependent on the context and what it appears. But quite often, he's making reference onto people. Because remember in Re uh, Revelation 17, uh, the horse sitteth on the waters. Waters are likened onto who? Peoples. Okay? Which, uh, verse 17, which bringeth forth the chariot and horse, the army and the power. They shall lie down together. They shall not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched as tow. See, this is talking about the new heavens and the new earth and whatnot, stuff like that. Prophecy concerning that. But for this, we are, you know, because like I said, we're going to be hitting 1 Corinthians chapter 5 here a little later. Okay, so let's continue. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Therefore, forgetting those things that are behind, I press forward for toward the mark and high calling of Jesus Christ. I just bradized that big part. But see, forgetting those things that are behind, go forward. Go forward. Devils like to drudge up the past and put it in your face as if you're taking dog's dung and rubbing it into their own nose. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? And see, verse 3 here in Psalm 40, look at that, okay? And he hath put a new song in my mouth, even praise unto our God. Many shall see it and fear and shall trust in the Lord. Meaning, your testimony, not just verbally, because you have the Lord himself living in you. That circumcision made without hands. When you have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, you know the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that Spirit, the Lord living within you, and He's work, and you're working out what He has put in, uh, that's going to, people are going to notice that. Okay? People are going to notice that you have God living in you by the way you will live, by the way you adhere to the Scriptures, the way you respond, the way you do this and that. Okay? The way you live your daily life is testimony that the Lord is in you. People are going to see that, okay? If you got to resort to wearing a t-shirt or, or you just merely have a changed life, and not a new creature, there's something wrong there, buddy boy. You, you understand? Look at it. Uh, go back to Isaiah 19. Uh, Isaiah, Isaiah, verse, uh, Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. 
shall ya shall shall ye plural not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Uh, who cometh to me out of his belly shall flow living waters? The beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my people, my chosen. I like, I, look at that verse. Okay, beasts and dragons, owls, those are things, uh, you know, beast, okay, dragons, owls, okay, animals, because I give waters in the wilderness. We, the, the Gentile, have been grafted in, that's the mystery, okay, not what Catholics tell you, that's the mystery, that the Gentiles have been grafted into the tree of the Jew. Beasts, dragons, owls. Owls are unclean, by the way. Being grafted into the tree of the Jew. Okay? Because I give waters in the wilderness. We, as it says, as Paul says, uh, we were without hope and without God, being aliens of the covenants, and not E.T., of the covenants and commonwealth of Israel. But he hath made us accepted into the beloved. Oh, yeah. Could verse 20 be a reference onto this dispensation about grafting us in to the tree of the Jew? You chew on that one for a while yourself and get back to me, okay? And, say, and see that? To give drink to my people, my chosen? They are enemies of the gospel for our sake that we might, might provoke them to jealousy? As I have been told before, no self-respecting Jew would ever truly fall for the Trinity or fall for the nonsense which is Christianity. Especially right now. I mean, come on. If you're truly Jewish, and that's you, my friend from England, I know that's you with your messianic stuff, you idiot, go away. But you true Jews... Come on, you look at what these Christians do, what they say, and especially Catholicism, which purposely has made what is the faith abhorrent unto you. Because what? You Jews, true Jews out there, okay? What do you think of when you think of Christian? You think Catholic, right? Of course you do. I know you do, okay? I've run into it. What else do you think of? You think of Joel Osteen. Benny Hinn, Creflo Dollar, right? Right? Uh, Kenneth Doplin. You think you equate those people, right? A lot of those guys use the authorized version of the scriptures. They're Christians. I, you know, brethren, I understand why the Jews will have nothing to do, why uh, Jews don't want to refer to themselves as Christians. I don't want, I'm not referring to myself as a Christian. I'm not. I get it. <laughs> the Jews are onto something. Okay? Think about that. Because, brethren, brethren, Christians put the Jews through the Holocaust because the Lord allowed it as judgment upon his people. When you mean right, Catholics. Verse 21. This people have I formed for myself. They shall shew forth my praise. This people. Now, we just saw about in Romans. He's Lord over all, rich unto all who call upon him, Jew and Gentile. A new creature to bring together, to cut, the, to get away that wall of separation between Jew and Gentile, making in one a new creature, both of Jew 
and Gentile. Get it? Yeah, verses 20 and 21 sure do fit for that, don't it? Sure does. And this doesn't mean about replacement theology, you idiot Catholics. No. Let's continue now, okay? Verse 4 in Psalm 40. Blessed is the man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respecteth not the proud, nor such as turn aside to lies. <laughs> the Lord. His, their, his trust. Jeremiah chapter 17. You know, looking when the Lord showed this to me this morning, it's like right away when, I, when we came to this, I was like, oh wow, and right away. Uh, Jeremiah chapter 17 verses 5 and 6. Thus saith the Lord, Cursed be the man that trusteth in man. Why is that? Because Satan um, is all about the things of man. Okay? And maketh flesh his arm. And whose heart departeth from the Lord. You know, flesh, the way for God, which my dear friend from England actually serves, the way for God. Okay? Yeah. For he shall be like the heath in the desert, and shall not see when good cometh, and there is none good but who? God. But shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness, in a salt land, and not inhabited. Verse 5, uh, verse 5 now. In uh, Psalm 40. Many, O Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts which are to usward, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. And of course you can tie into that, my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither my ways, thy ways. Of course, you can tie that into that. But in Jeremiah chapter 17, again, okay, verses 7 on to verse 10 now. Cursed be the man that trusteth in man that maketh flesh his arm. It's interesting that the, the face thing is <laughs> your thing on your channel, like this. Perfectly round with your face like that. You know, the way for God. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Blessed is the man that trusteth in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh. Now the fire from the dragon. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. Come on. Repeat this out loud with me. I don't care who's listening to you. The heart is deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins. Even to give every man according to his ways. And according to the fruit of his doing. Verse 6. Sacrifice and offering thou didst not desire. Mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Isaiah 57. Isaiah 57. The word contrite appears five times the number of death. Contrite appears five times in the scriptures, the number of death. Five times in four verses. Isaiah chapter 57, verses 15 on to verse 21. 
See, a lot of people have sor sorrow that they were caught, but sorrow that it's their fault that the Lord died for them. That's a totally different type of contrition. That's godly sorrow. That he took what you rightly deserve. Not because you got caught. There are many people in this jail over here who are convicted, but how, and sorrowful, but how many are truly contrite? Not too many. Verse, uh, Isaiah 57, verses 15 under verse 21, and remember Isaiah 57, 1 and 2, I believe a Old Testament reference maybe of the catching away? Sure does seem like it. Okay. Verses 15 on to verse 21, the close of the chapter. Right? Yep. For thus saith the, the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy, separate. And note the uh, capital H there. Okay? Separate. Other. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. For there is none other name given among men under heaven whereby we must be saved. Jesus Christ, holy, separate, other, set apart. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite one. For I will not contend forever, neither will I always be wroth, neither will I always, neither will I be always wroth. For the spirit would fail before me, and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and I smote him, I hid me, and was wroth. And he went on forwardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways and will heal him. I will lead him also and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I create the fruit of the lips. Peace. Peace to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord. And I will heal him. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose dirt, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace, saith my God, to the wicked. What was that other reference? Uh, Isaiah chapter 66. Yes. Isaiah chapter 66. Verses 1 and 2. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Where is the house that ye build unto me? If the Lord build not the house, the watchman waketh but in vain. They labor in vain that build it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, you built your own house there, buddy boy, by your belief, okay? And where's the place of my rest? See, you build your own house and you think the Lord's going to rest within you because you just believe and skip over his requirements? About that, for all those things hath mine hand made. That's your created being. Even Satan is. And all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Ready? Even to him that is poor? That doesn't mean money. Get that out of your head. Yes, poor, being poor is attributed onto not having you know money or whatever. But that's like the lesser of the meaning. Poor, but to this man will I look, even to him that is poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. Brokenness and contrition, fear of the Lord, 
You can't get away with it. You can't get away without it. You can't get away from it. If the Lord is going to save you, you have to be broken and contrite. And the fear of the Lord will cause you to call upon His name, people. Okay? You're not going to get away from that. Even though the devils are working feverishly to get you away from the truth. And of course, Samuel. First Samuel. I remember I heard about the two graves of Samuel that are apparently in Israel. And the one guy said about, well, that's first and second Samuel. <laughs> that's not a joke, by the way, even though you might snicker at that a little. Apparently there are two graves in Israel of Samuel. Apparently, okay? Samuel 15, 1 Samuel 15, verses 12 on to verse 23. We're going to do a little reading here because it's very meat. You know, brethren, no one is responsible for how you react or behave in any situation. No one but yourself is responsible for how you behave or react. Because when you try to blame someone else for the way you behave or react, you're exhibiting the old man. Okay? Called the Adamic nature. It doesn't matter if someone's standing there picking at your head. Still, are they forcing you to react or behave a certain way? They're, they're poking at you. You know, we looked at we looked at the Proverbs 26 to begin with. They're probing at you and picking at you, but are they responsible for you? The way you react? And when you do, they get all proud, don't they? Let's look at, in my opinion, the best scriptural example of this. King Saul. Okay. Verses 12 on to verse... Thank you, pardon, brother. Verses 12 on to verse 23. And, and when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and has gone about and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Saul comes out all brazen, brazen and with chutzpah, okay? Blessed be thou the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. That's a statement of guilt. Because he knew that he didn't. Why would you say that? I, look at what I have done. When he, he didn't. And he knows it. That's a statement of guilt. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleating of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They. He's king. He's responsible for these people. It falls on the king first. Interesting. Our chastisement and peace are upon him. King of the Jews. Jesus Christ. Uh, the king is responsible. Remember King David? It is I that have sinned. What have these sheep has done? have done? As king, he is responsible for the people. Okay? And Samuel... Okay, where was, where was it? Verse 15. And Saul said, They... Notice that. They have brought them from the Amalekites. Look at verse 12. Where he says, uh, or no, look at verse 13. I have performed the commandment of the, the Lord, distancing himself from the people. It's, you know, it's, I, 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 I've done this. It's, it's them, okay? Adamic, not a new creature, okay? Got to beware with people 
who do that. For the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God. And the rest we have utterly destroyed. Boy, is this guy a, a, a CEO of a business? Because in CEO corporate America, when everything goes good, I, I, I. But when everything goes wrong, we, we, we. Verse 13, I have performed. And right here, verse 15, they, them, we. Yeah. You get it? Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord has said this night. And Saul, like, oh, yeah. And he said unto him, Oh, say on. Let me hear. I'm all ears. Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel, and the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? He was the Lord's anointed. There's no getting away from that. And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore, then, didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? Now see, Samuel is doing, directing it, hey, you're the king, you're responsible. You can't blame them, okay? Uh, he said, you read the, the context here, the uh, Lord said, kill them all. Animals, kids, women, everything. Get rid of them. Okay? That's why Saul comes out in verse 13. I have distancing himself because he knew he was guilty. Okay? But see, he was trying to put blame them. The woman that thou gavest me to be with, she did give me of the tree and I did eat. Okay? This, this right here that is being addressed is what happens in corporate America, which what these devils do, which we of the Church of the Living God can fall into ourselves. Because uh, the spirit wars against the flesh. And sin is relegated to the flesh. Okay? And look at verse, uh, look at verse thir uh, 20 here. Okay? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me. And have brought Agag, the king of Amalek, uh, Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. Look, see, okay, I did. But yet he was to kill everybody. But in that statement alone, brought Agag. The Lord was very specific: kill everybody, kill them all, let nothing remain. That's including the king. So when Saul says right there, he kind of, you know. It, the, the jig was up already as it is said but he already shot himself in the foot there see when he says and have brought Agag I did I brought Agag see the, God said kill everybody Saul was in a pickle if there ever was one let's continue but, the, but see now right there in verse 20 he's like I did this but right here verse 21 going back to blaming somebody else but the people took of the spoil sheep and oxen the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal and Samuel said uh, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the vo voice of the Lord. Obeying. You're a thief and a robber if you go up some other way. You're to come to him broken and contrite people. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. And stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. King nothing. 
Okay. <laughs> and what verse was that on? Verse 6? Yeah. Sacrifice and offerings thou didst not desire. Mine ears, mine ears hast thou opened. Burnt offering and sin offering hast thou not required. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. How are these people going to hear the word of God unless someone is sent to them to preach the word of God unto them? Verse 7 and 8. Then said I, Lo, I come. In the volume of the book it is written of me. I delight to do thy will, O my God. Yea, thy law is within my heart. Now this is a clear um, reference unto our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Genesis chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22. Now that, uh, that's quoted elsewhere in the scripture. But this is referring unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. The Bibles, look it up on your Bible hub or, or uh, Bible gateway or whatever it is. Look up Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. In the Bibles, they, they, they screw up verse 8 on purpose. Because just like they do with the Spirit himself, when the scriptures say itself, they mess with this to try to prove their satanic trinity. Okay? And Abraham said, my son... God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Okay? And go to Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4. Luke chapter 4, verses 16. Oh, on to verse 32. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, not slaves, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book, and he gave it again to the minister, and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. And all bear him witness, and wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is not this Joseph's son? And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physician, heal thyself. That's the closest that you're going to get to where Jesus said of himself anything as being a physician. That's it. That's the closest you're going to get. Whatsoever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in thy country. And he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. But I tell you of a truth, Many widows were in Israel in the days of Elias, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months. Talking about Elijah. Elias is the Greek rendering. 
when great famine was throughout all the land. But unto none of them was Elias sent, save unto Septa, a city of Sidon, unto a woman that was a widow. And many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elasius, Elijah, the prophet. And none of them was cleansed, saving Naaman, the Syrian. Note the difference of Sidon and Syria. They were not directly tied onto the Jewish people. From a Jewish prophet, note that. And all they in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath. Which happens. And rose up and thrust him out of the city and led him onto the brow of the hill where, where on their city was built, that they might cast him down headlong. But he, passing through the midst of them, went his way and came down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and taught them on the Sabbath days. And they were astonished at his doctrine. For his word was with power. Obviously so. Because he's God, our Father. Okay. Verses 9 and 10 now in Psalm 40. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not um, neglected to declare unto you the whole counsel of God. That's a reference that you could uh, go to. Uh, I just bradized that in the Pauline epistles. I have not, or no, that's in the book of Acts. Acts chapter 20, I believe it is. Where he says, I haven't uh, shunned to uh, declare unto you the whole counsel of God. Okay? That's a reference. I don't have that written down for this one. But that's one you could use. Okay? I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared... Thy faithfulness and thy salvation, I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. I have declared thy faithfulness, by grace ye are saved, and thy salvation through faith. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Now we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. Or 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Excuse me. Where was that? That uh, in 20, right? Uh, while we're here. Uh, 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 let me see. Where he says, ah, verse 27. Uh, Acts uh, 20, verse 27. Okay? Uh, For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips, O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. Okay? What he has put in, we are to put out. You know, to work out, okay? Not to save ourselves, okay? I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. For I have not shunned to declare unto you all the counsel of God. Acts 20, verse 27. Roman, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 11 unto the close of the chapter. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord. I know the terror of the Lord. Because he scared the hell out of me. Okay? We persuade men. But we are made manifest unto God. And I, tr and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. For we commend not ourselves again unto you but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them, which glory in appearance and not in heart. Yeah. Glory in appearance. Oh, like having a changed life? 
and not being rather a new creature? Glory in appearance. You know, you got your Christian t-shirt, you go to your church building, you wear your Sunday best, you walk around with a Bible under your arm or something like that, huh? <laughs> I don't care if you have the Church of the Living God and are wearing rags. I don't care. It's Do not rich men uh, persecute you, like it says in James, okay? For the time of Jacob's trouble, obviously, but don't don't the rich people persecute you? That's why uh, uh, not many noble, not many mighty are called. Because see, you're rich in this world, you got all kinds of problems. Let's continue. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is to God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And all were dead in trespasses and sins. Everyone is dead in trespasses and sins. But see, we know that Jesus Christ died for the ungodly. But, and we have the terror of the Lord. So we persuade men. It's like, hey, Christ died. He did die for you. But see, it's your fault that he went to the cross. And then they get it. Well, how did someone 2,000 years? That's, when, that's why... Uh, the Romans Road, which everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit calls heresy. Uh-huh, yeah. That's why it's a privilege, an honor, when the Lord gets to, uses you to bring someone onto himself through the Romans Road. Okay? You show them pointedly their situation. Okay, let's continue. And that he died for all. Yes, he did. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. See, we love him because he first loved us and gave. John 3.16 is not the gospel. Okay? It is not the gospel. Loved, past tense. Die, I uh, gave, past tense. Okay? God's love is at Calvary. You don't go there broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord call upon him. His love is not for you. Okay? Let's continue. Wherefore hence we know no wherefore henceforth know we no man after the flesh. Yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. How do we know Christ after the flesh? Well, some of those were witnesses while he were alive. You know, Paul himself saw Jesus, but we have the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ in the scriptures. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted, he is a new creature. Doesn't mean sinlessly perfect. Okay? No. But a new creature. Something died, and something has been born again. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, the old nature, the old man, which has been which is in the flesh. Behold, all things are become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. He saves you, you're of the church of the living God. Verses 9 and 10 again. I have preached righteousness in the great congregation. Lo, I have not refrained my lips. O Lord, thou knowest. I have not hid thy righteousness within my heart. I have declared thy faithfulness and thy salvation. I have not concealed thy loving kindness and thy truth from the great congregation. Hey, buddy boy. Why don't you tell us all how to be saved? <laughs> yeah. You probably could make something because you're copying something that somebody else did. But having it showed you from the Lord? Yeah. And all things are of God. Verse 18 in uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation. 
how shall they preach unless preach unless they are sent? To wit, that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto unto Himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ. As though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be ye reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Uh, you look at verse 21 in the Bibles, they messed that, they, they really messed this one up too. They really screwed this one up too. Yea, hath God said, see. Okay? Now, verse 11. Withhold not thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Psalm 119. Beth. I'm not going to give you the numbers. Okay? I'm not going to give you the numbers for Psalm 119. Beth. Okay. Now I understand that there are certain sets of scriptures that don't have okay, let me show you. That don't have this. See where my finger is? See that? Beth? I understand that. But um, come on. Psalm 119, Beth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Withhold not thou thy tender mercies from me, O Lord. Let thy loving kindness and thy truth continually preserve me. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. John 17, 17. With my whole heart have I sought thee. O oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. See, those of the church of the living God who are a new creature, you understand what it is to have the word hid in your heart. Lost people can't get that. And that's one of those things that we can't really explain to them because they won't get it. Blessed art thou, O Lord, teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes I will not forget thy word. Okay? Verse 12. For innumerable evils have compassed me about. Mine iniquities have taken hold upon me, so that I am not able to look up. They are more than the hairs of mine head. Therefore my heart faileth me. Psalm 119 Teth. Psalm 119, Teth. Not giving you the, the numbers for one, Psalm 119. Learn Psalm 119 in the divisions of the Hebrew alphabet that are here. Okay? Please. It'll do you good. Psalm 119, Teth. Thou hast dealt well with thy servant, O Lord, according unto thy word. Teach me good judgment and knowledge, for I have, for I have believed thy commandments. Before I was afflicted, I went astray. But now have I kept thy word. Thou art good and doest good. Teach me thy statutes. The proud have forged a lie against me. 
but I will keep thy precepts with my whole heart. Their heart is as fat as grease, Jeshurun, but I delight in thy law. <laughs> it is good for me that I have been afflicted that I might learn thy statutes. <laughs> the law of thy mouth is better unto me than thousands of gold and silver. Verse 13 on to verse 15 now in Psalm 40. Be pleased, O Lord, to deliver me, for he delighteth in mercy. He delighteth in mercy. He doth not afflict willingly. Okay? O Lord, make haste to help me, because I have not seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Verse 14. Let them be ashamed and confounded together that seek after my soul to destroy it. Let them be driven backward and put to shame that wish me evil. All my enemies and all the enemies of our Lord, they wish us evil. Let them be desolate for reward of their shame that say unto me, Aha! Aha! You know, when Brother Brian and Tim Conman had their little thing, um, the devils just flocked to Tim Conman, okay? Just flocked to him like crazy. Um, you'll see that when people have things with or disagreements with or whatever, you'll see the devils flock to the one who has the issue or something like that. You saw it with, um, like I said, Tim Conman. Okay? You, you've seen that. Okay? I've seen that. Anyone with eyes, uh, Ray Charles could have seen that. Okay? Okay? The devils flocked to him. And now they're calling him, you know, brother and all that. Devils uh, are calling that guy brother. Okay? Yeah. Uh, be cautious of that. But you see that. You know, they're looking for, aha! You know? If anything they can find, they think they have an aha moment. You know? They're making diligent searches, looking for things to hold against people. And on this, Psalm 31. Psalm 31. Verses 17 and on to verse 19. Let me not be ashamed, O Lord, for I have called upon thee. Let the wicked be ashamed, and let them be silent in the grave. Let the lying lips be put to silence, which speak grievous things proudly and contemptuously against the righteous. Every single one of these easy believism devils, the 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 lot of them in Canada, and uh, a lot you know over in England, uh, all these devils, okay, here in America. Okay? Oh, how great is thy goodness, which thou hast laid up for them that fear thee, which thou hast wrought for them that trust in thee before the sons of men. Fear thee, for those who fear thee. Now, Psalm 41. Psalm 41. I, this, this, I, I, this was... Okay, Psalm 41. <laughs> I'll use this one. Blessed is he that considereth the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he shall be blessed upon the earth, and thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. When your ways please the Lord, even your enemies will be at peace with you. They won't be at peace with you, but right here. And thou wilt not deliver him unto the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him upon the bed of languishing. Thou wilt make all his bed in his sickness. I said, Lord, be merciful unto me. 
Heal my soul, for I have sinned against thee. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? That's, you know, when, like I told you, the, when the devils, my enemies, found out that I have a heart problem, they're probably praying that the Lord kill me with a heart attack or stroke. They are praying, aren't you? Come on. Come on, Mr. Wafer God boy. Come on. I think, have the stones to at least admit. Send me, hey, go ahead and send me a private email with your gorilla thing. Go ahead. Send it to me. At least admit the obvious that you're hoping I die. Go ahead. Come on, tough guy. Do it. Do it. I know you'd kill me if you had the chance. Come on. So I, I, I'll tell you here. You, you send it, your gorilla, whatever, or whatever email of the thousands of myriads you have. Come on. Admit to me the obvious, tough guy. Come on. Do it. You want me dead. Come on. They want us to die, brethren. Once, see, once we get resurrected, they're going to have a field day. They want us out so they can come in with their father, their God, Satan. Mine enemies speak evil of me. When shall he die and his name perish? Come on. Seriously, tough guy. Send, send me a private email. Okay? Go ahead and use all the curse words. I got enough to, to uh, nail your coffin for you anyway. Go ahead. Sh tell me the obvious. Come on. Okay? And if he come to see me, he speaketh vanity. <laughs> yeah. His heart gathereth iniquity to itself. Remember, God knows your heart. When he goeth abroad, he telleth it. You shall know them by their fruits. From, and this isn't to you, my friend from England. Uh, this is from another friend of mine. Uh, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Why would you have said such things to me if they weren't always there to begin with? And you bring things up to use as leverage against me? Brethren, you got to be beware of people. You really do. You really do. Because absolute suffering reveals. And absolute suffering does reveal absolutely. All that hate me whisper together against me. Against me do they devise my hurt. And that's, just not, that's not just me, brethren. All of us of the Church of the Living God. They whisper. They speak with one another in what they do in dark, secret places. It's not just for me. That's for the entirety of the Church of the Living God. Yea. An evil disease, say they, cleaveth fast unto him. And now that he lieth, he shall rise up no more. Yea. Yea. Mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. But thou, O Lord, be merciful unto me, and raise me up, that I may requite them. By this I know that thou favorest me, because mine enemy doth not triumph over me. And as for me, thou holdest me in mine integrity, and settest me before thy face forever. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting and to everlasting. Amen. And amen. Psalm 70. 
Oh, not this one. <laughs> Psalm 70. Hopefully now we can finish Psalm 70 before this video is over. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Let them be ashamed and confounded that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion that desire my hurt. Let them be turned back for a reward of their shame that say, Aha! Aha! Looking for an aha moment on you. Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Alleluia! And let such as love thy salvation say continually, Let God be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Are you poor and needy? Or are you self-sufficient? Make haste unto me, O God. Thou art my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Make no tarrying. Second Timothy chapter four. Second Timothy chapter four. Verses fourteen on to verse eighteen. Alexander the coppersmith did me much evil. I was actually going to name you here, but that's what you want, so I'm not going to do that. The Lord reward him according to his works. And see, there again, we can't be like the enemy, brethren. The enemy speak evil of us and hope for our death. We, when they die, or when trouble comes upon them, remember, we can't rejoice in that unless the Lord see it and it displease Him. All we got as the church of the living God, Lord, reward them according to their works. Your righteous judgment be upon them. Which I pray for you. Your right, the Lord's righteous judgment be upon you. The Lord reward you according to your evil works. Of whom be thou ware also, for he hath greatly withstood our words. At my first answer no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. When you have a brother who is in need and you purposely, you know, leave him. Uh, meaning also as well, like abandon him and even in prayer. There are people that I don't like of the church of the living God who are my brothers. I love them. I pray for them. I pray for them for God's mercy upon them. Yes, I may not like them. They may not like me. But I'm still praying for you. I'm still praying for you. You know, that, the God, that our Lord Jesus Christ, our God and our Father, gives you mercy. That He makes known to you His will. And that He gets you out of where you are. I pray for that. I do. We don't abandon our brethren. Especially in prayer. Don't abandon your brethren. Pray for them. Pray for them. Okay? Notwithstanding the Lord stood with me and strengthened me that by me the preaching might be fully known and that all Gentiles might hear and I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. Note every evil work. Theirs, God forbid, your own. And will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. To whom? Be glory forever and ever, forever and ever. Amen. Okay? Now, what did we read? Okay, we read on to verse 15. Verse 16. 
Let all those that seek thee rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation say continually, The Lord be magnified. Psalm 107. Let the Lord be magnified continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Excuse me. Psalm 107 verses 31 on to verse 43. Not 105, Brad. Take your part. Psalm 107 verses 31 on to the close of the chapter. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Let them exalt him also in the congregation of the people and praise him in the assembly of the elders. He turneth rivers into a wilderness and the water springs into dry ground. A fruitful land into barrenness for the wickedness of them that dwell therein. He turneth the wilderness into a standing water and dry ground into water springs. And there he maketh the hungry to dwell, that they may prepare a city for habitation. If the Lord build not the house, they labor in vain to build it. And sow the fields and plant vineyards, which may yield fruits of increase. He blesseth them also, so that they are multiplied greatly and suffereth not their cattle to decrease. Also to Psalm 107 right here, reference on to how in the kingdom of heaven it's going to be farming, okay? Just so you know. Again, they are minished and brought low through oppression, affliction, and sorrow. He poureth contempt upon princes and causeth them to wander in the wilderness where there is no way. Princes! Israel! Prince with God! Okay? Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. My brother, our best friend, Alexander Hartley, um, he has said unto me, and this is true, you and I as the church of the living God, we may have much relation, but the family of God church of the living God that's our family okay my wife and I we have pretty big family problems ourselves with our immediate relation okay I know many of you have problems with your immediate relation I, I know that but see you and I as the church of the living God we have the same father we were reborn born again from death and our new creatures in Christ Jesus. Yet setteth he the poor on high from affliction, and maketh him families like a flock. Does not our Lord refer to us as his flock? The righteous shall see it and rejoice, and all iniquity shall stop her mouth. Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? Whoso is wise and will observe these things, even they shall understand the loving kindness of the Lord. And finally, verse 17. But I am poor and needy. Yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6, verses 20 on to verse 26. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. 
Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil for the Son of Man's sake. Sad that that kind of works both ways for us right now at the moment, doesn't it, brother? Yeah. Rejoice ye in that day, and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Yeah, be very quick to tell me how you're a Christian and a millionaire and boast about it. Yeah. Ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye are hunger now, for ye shall hunger. Excuse me. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye, for ye shall mourn and weep. You can tie this into uh, James chapter 4, I believe it is. Okay. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. All men. All men. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Second Corinthians chapter one, verses eight, unto verse eleven. For we would not, brethren, have you ignorant of our trouble which came to us in Asia, that we were pressed out of measure, above strength, insomuch that we despaired even of life. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead who delivered us from so great a death, and doth deliver, in whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. Ye also helping together by prayer for us, that for the gift bestowed upon us by the means of many persons, thanks may be given by many on our behalf. Verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God which raiseth the dead, whom we'll trust in ourselves. But I am poor and needy, yet the Lord thinketh upon me. Thou art my help and my deliverer. Make no tarrying, O my God. See, we have hope and trust and faith upon our Lord Jesus Christ, our God, our Father. And we are made weak, we are made poor that we don't trust in ourselves. If you're, if you're one of these easy believism heretics, I do hope you repent. Because that, that is exactly what you are doing. You are having faith in yourself, in your belief. Or, or in a system of religion, whatever it is. But see, we have the church of the living God. We have much to rejoice over. Much to rejoice over. What do you have? Philippians chapter 4. Verses 10. Unto the close of the chapter. And we'll be done. But I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Oh boy, I'll tell you what, brother, sister. I know both how to be a base, and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. 
I can do all things through Christ, which strengtheneth me. And these Christians have trivialized, trivialized this. But it is truth. We are not to depend on ourselves. Woe be that man that maketh flesh his arm. Notwithstanding ye have well done, that ye did communicate with my affliction. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. For even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. Not because I desire a gift, but I desire fruit that may abound to your account. See, when you give, it's fruit to your account, treasures in heaven. And yet, even down here, yes, our Lord will do that. But see, the charismatics, they say, give to them and he'll reap uh, for you here. But the fruit that abound to your account is first treasures in heaven. And see, if I start naming you, you're going to get your reward here. And then what, what does that lead to? Yeah, I've, I've given thousands of dollars. Yeah, yeah. It's fruit on, in heaven, heavenly rewards. You know, let your uh, let not your left hand know what your right hand doeth. I might have that backwards. Excuse me. Okay. You know, if you give, if I give, I don't expect anything in return, except fruit that abounds in heaven. And if he lets some fruit come to fruition here, uh, down here on earth now, praise be the Lord. But it's heavenly fruit but I have all and abound I am full having received of Epaphroditus the things which were sent from you an odor of sweet smell a sacrifice acceptable well pleasing to God but my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus now on to God and our Father be glory forever and ever. Amen. Salute every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren which are with me greet you. All the saints salute you. Chiefly they that are of Caesar's household. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, let the heavens rejoice. <laughs> ah, yes, brethren. Cambridge is here. We as the church of the living God, we have much to rejoice in. Our time is ending. Our time is coming to an end. You'll, you'll be rid of us soon enough, devils, so you can frolic as you will. Our, you, we're leaving soon enough. Uh, one second, brethren. We have much to rejoice in. This is not our home. Our time is coming to an end. It's sooner or later, we're going to hear come up hither. We're going to be resurrected and y'all devils can have all that you want. If you see this, dearly, dearly beloved, that's why um, I didn't answer you right away because I was making this. Pray for one another, brethren. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for a dearly, dearly beloved sister who's going right now through some horrific, horrific spiritual attacks. Please pray for her, this beloved sister. 
Please pray for those who are sick of the church of the living God. Please pray for your brethren in Australia, the church of the living God. It's crazy over there. Please pray for our brethren in Canada. They're, they're not close behind us, Australia. Pray for your own countrymen. Pray for the babes in Christ. Because right now, a babe in Christ, these devils, that's their target. Also pray for God's righteous judgment to be upon the wicked. Don't pray for... Don't pray as they hope unto us. Because that means you will be like unto them. Pray for one another, brethren. Time is short. You know, I think it would do some of us good if we all had that experience and brush with death. Um, my wife had it. I had it. You know, I'm not talking about the death that we we die when our Lord saves us. Okay, we all who are saved, born again, converted of the Church of the Living God, we all experience that death. But like I said, we know where we're going to go when we die. We know that. But when it comes face to face with you, yeah, you know. That really, yeah. Hopefully this has been, uh, like I said, this, this was given to me this morning. This video was given to me this morning. Okay, so hopefully, um, hopefully this will help some of you, encourage some of you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We have much to rejoice in, brethren brothers and sisters let us rejoice yea again I say rejoice for our day is coming anyway that's it I love you we'll see you in the next video